Hello everyone, and let's check out another amazing chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz. And in this chess game, Steinitz has the white pieces and his opponent is Kurt von Bardeleben. And this game was played in Hastings in 1895 in the famous Hastings chess tournament. And this chess game is also one of the most famous chess games of Wilhelm Steinitz ever. So Kurt von Bardeleben was also a formidable player. Well, in the famous Hastings chess tournament, every player was formidable. So Wilhelm Steinitz starts the game with playing e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to c4, the Italian opening, bishop to c5, c3, knight to f6, d4, e takes on d4, c takes on d4, bishop to b4, check, blocking with the knight, d5, e takes on d5, knight takes on d5, well Steinitz castled, bishop to e6, bishop to g5, retreating and blocking with the bishop, and Wilhelm Steinitz captured the knight, bishop takes on d5, bishop takes bishop, Knight takes, and Queen takes on d5. Bishop takes on e7, and capturing the bishop with the knight. Knight takes on e5, simplifying the game. It looks like both players are going for the draw. But on the other hand, white has the isolated pawn on d4. But black haven't castled, and Steinitz has the open file, and he played Rook to e1, pinning the knight, f6, and queen to e2 by Steinitz, threatening checkmate, queen takes knight, defending with the queen, rook from a to c1, c6, d5, sacrificing the pawn, c takes on d5, and knight to d4 by Steinitz, unpinning the knight, king to f7, Wilhelm Steinitz played knight to e6, rook from h to c8, and queen to g4 by Steinitz, attacking the g-pawn, and threatening mate in two. So blocking, it is white to move, and Steinitz played knight to g5, that's check, king to e8. If capturing the knight, then queen takes queen. So knight to g5, and king to e8. And what would you do in this position? Wilhelm Steinitz played. Rook takes on e7. What a move. Sacrificing the rook by Steinitz. But we have king to f8, not capturing the rook. Well, it was quite a deep move by Steinitz. If queen takes rook, then rook takes on c8. Rook takes and queen takes on c8. And white is winning. And after rook takes on e7, if king takes on e7, then queen to b4, and black is losing, believe it or not, king to e8, and rook to e1, king to d8, knight to e6, and there is no defense. If king to e8, then queen to f8. If queen takes knight, then rook takes queen, and there is no back rank mate, because defending with the rook, the rook can go back, and defending everything, white is winning. So this is why Steinitz played, rook takes on e7, what a move, king to f8, not capturing the rook, and in this position, white can't capture the queen, because there is back rank mate, rook takes rook, there is back rank mating threat, what would you do in this position? Well, Wilhelm Steinitz played an epic move, and he played rook to f7, check. If capturing the rook with the queen, then this rook is going to fall. This is why Bardeleben played king to g8, and rook to g7 by Steinitz. What an incredible move. We have king to h8. If king takes rook, then queen takes queen with check. And there is no back rank mate, because this is check. 
This is why you have to rook to g7, Bardele ben played, king to h8, Wilhelm Steinitz captured on h7. And at this moment of the game, something amazing was happened. Bardeleben stood up and without saying anything, with a poker face, left the room. Everyone who was watching this game was in shock. No one was expecting anything like that. And also after waiting for his opponent, Wilhelm Steinitz also stood up and left his room, left his hotel room. Also Bardeleben was in his room, hiding into the shadows. He was thinking deeply, and he was in shock. He hadn't expected anything like that. And later on Wilhelm Steinitz received a letter, and in that letter Bardeleben said, I resign. So without announcing his resignation, Bardeleben left the room, but later on, he announced his resignation with a letter. It was unbelievable. In the following day, Wilhelm Steinitz went to the chess room again and demonstrated how he would checkmate his opponent if von Bardeleben would not resign. So Wilhelm Steinitz demonstrated his famous possible continuation. And let me show you the possible continuation of Steinitz. After rook takes on h7, if king to g8, then rook to g7, if king goes back, well, this is a bit deep. So queen to h4 check, what else? King takes on g7, and black is basically getting forced checkmated, as you can see. There is no defense. Knight to f7, king to d7, and queen to d6. And what an incredible deep calculation by Steinitz. After rook to g7, if king to f8, then knight to h7. If king takes on g7, then queen takes queen with check. If king to e8, then queen takes queen. Checkmate. Von Bardeleben was in shock. He was not expected anything like that at the times when the pool of players was not as big as it is today. He probably have never played anyone like Wilhelm Steinitz. And let me give you another very interesting information about this chess game. In 1895, in the Hastings Chess Tournament, Wilhelm Steinitz was 60 years old. And when he was 60 years old, this was his performance in this chess game. Well, I got goosebumps. An incredible chess game by Wilhelm Steinitz at the age of 60. An epic game. He really was an old lion. So this is why after Rook takes on h7, Bardeleben resigned. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.